Right, for this case, let's say we've got sine t squared plus, um, let's say, 3 sine t Three sine t plus two equals to zero. Uh, that is one type of trigonometric equation which is coming in a kind of disguise as a quadratic equation. If you look at this, you could say let x equals to sine t. Then you put the quadratic equation, isn't it? Okay. So now our first task here would be to try to see whether we can factorize this. Can we? If it was x squared plus 3x plus 2, can we factorize? What are the factors? What are the factors? I think it's sine here. T sine t plus plus 2 plus 1 all together now when I've got the two product of two numbers a product of two numbers being equal to 0 I'm talking about a times b being equal to 0 then you know that this is means that a is equal to 0 or b is equal to Zero. Then we we'll get here say sine sine what? T is equal to minus one or sine t equals to minus two. We need to solve this equation. How do we, we need to give an answer to the initial equation there, isn't it? What can you say at this point? Yes? I said, what can you say at this stage or at this point of our solution? Yes? Come again? Then you can say, this one is not applicable. How do that? In some situation, depending on the factors, if the, the numbers could have come here, this one applicable and that one applicable, then we solve what? Two equations all together. Okay. So now we are back to example number one and number two. What do we have? We've got a sine of t being equal to minus one. Then what I didn't put at the beginning there, let's give a general solution. All the solutions possible for this. What are we going to do now? We know from um, now I can even use my graph to check. I can use my graph from zero to 2 pi. Let's say pi here, 2 pi. Graphs can also be handy here to sort of try to visualize your solution. The graph will go this way. We know at the maximum point there is 1, at the minimum there is what? Minus 1. And we know that is halfway there and that is also halfway there. Then we know this is pi. This is that three halves of pi. And this is half of pi. So, without even using a reference angle here, we can actually get what we want. Isn't it? Isn't it? Then we can start say here, uh, sine second function sine of t equals to sine inverse minus one. I'm writing this thing on purpose because I there's a certain phrasing I want to, to, to say here. When you are using sine function, second function, what is the what is the statement here? How should you read this thing back to yourself? This thing is saying where is the ratio sine minus one? At what angle is the ratio sine minus one? How do that? Sine is given an angle. It couples the ratio. The output is minus one. Minus one. 
Und so one as one, then looking at that graph we can see that t, t is equal to three halves of five. Isn't it? That's t, isn't it? Where is sine minus half? Is it three halves of pi? So t is equal to three halves of pi. Are we together? Okay. I know. Okay, just hold on there. Just hold on there. It's three halves of pi. Can you hold on that? It's three halves of pi. At, at three halves of pi, sine has a ratio minus one. Are we together? That is the first solution after zero. Now let's get all the solutions now. We now incorporate that the sine function is periodic. Then we say, therefore, t is equal to three halves of pi plus two k pi, where k is an integer. Out of that. Okay. So guys, now what am I saying to you? You should expect these type of equations, which are not like given like mana from heaven as an obvious trigonometric equation, but hidden in some kind of another type of an equation like trigonometric or even exponential. Then you unpack it yourself using your knowledge until you get give a solution to the to the problem. How do that? Okay. Let me stop there for a while and just say thank you for listening to this part.